Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for April 30th, 2021. Walt Disney World annual pass holders have been anxiously awaiting the arrival of their complimentary orange bird magnets, which celebrate the 2021 Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. We received two magnets in the mail with the spring has sprung on the outside of the envelope. And uh, hopefully you've gotten yours already. People have started getting them. Uh, hopefully they arrive better than ours did. Ours were a little beat up. I think Kevin's actually had a hole in them. <laughs> we don't have the picture of the back. There's like a hole in the back of the magnet. Hopefully yours is better. May the 4th be with you. New Star Wars treats and drinks are flying into the Walt Disney World Resort to celebrate the honorary Star Wars Day. One of these treats is the returning Baby Yoda Moose, which is back at Amaret's Patisserie in Disney Springs. Uh, you can read a full review of that on our site. If you'd like a full list of all the treats that will be available at Disney's Hollywood Studios and beyond for both May the 4th, Revenge of the 5th, and the whole month of May and some other days, uh, you want to go to our website. More of the abandoned pygmy welcoming party scene has been removed from the Jungle Cruise at the Magic Kingdom. Following the removal of the spears, the hut in the background is now gone as well. All that remains in the scene are the canoes. This leaves quite a bit of empty beach to the left of the scene. It's unknown what will replace these things in this scene. Obviously, Disney announced changes to the trapped safari rhino pole scene. They, of course, uh, last week announced the Trader Sam's gift shop scene, replacing the Trader Sam animatronic at the end of the ride. We know somewhere they're putting in a boat with a bunch of apes, like uh, wreaking havoc. Um, but it seems we still don't know the full extent of this refurbishment, what's being changed, or exactly how many scenes will be new. Hopefully, as time goes on, uh, we will find out. It's been almost two weeks since the final turret cap decoration was installed on Cinderella Castle at the Magic Kingdom. Castle, of course, being decorated for the upcoming 50th anniversary. And only one piece of decor remains to be installed, the large plaque with the 50 on it that will be placed over the clock in the center of the castle. This week, we saw four posts appear on the castle, indicating that the sign will come sooner. At the very least, well, the posts are there for it whenever they decide to install that. While standard character meet and greets remain suspended at Walt Disney World, characters continue to make distanced appearances. At Magic Kingdom, guests can now catch Belle near her father's cottage in Fantasyland. The princess in her provincial town outfit walked the exterior queue of Enchanted Tales with Belle, which has been closed uh, since March of 2020. Belle posed for photos and waved to guests from a safe distance. She spoke to guests too, uh, though had to project a bit, as you might guess. At WDWNT, we often report on milestones. Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary is coming up. The reopening of Disneyland today, which we'll talk about more in a few moments. But uh, we have a sad one for you. The uh, wooden standees replacing audio animatronics at the Grand Fiesta Tour. That's right, those cutouts of Donald, Panchito, and Jose are still there. And it's now been three months. For three months now, we have been without these animatronics. Disney said they would return in the spring. That is still yet to be seen, and spring is very quickly running out on Disney, of course, to celebrate the missing animatronics. From CarouselProducts.com, you could pick up our Donde Esta maintenance shirt. Uh, <laughs> it's available now. Cheap plug. Since November, we've been bringing you news about the new gelato stand coming to the Italy Pavilion of Epcot. Now we finally have some big news to share. Announced on Wednesday by Disney, the gelato stand will be called Gelateria Toscana and will open to guests in May. It was originally supposed to open in February. Shocking! This week, Gelateria Toscana's sign was installed. There it is. Installation of the string lights has been completed off to the side of the stand as well. And uh, they finally released the full menu. Find the full menu at WDWNT.com. The Mickey and Friends World Tour Cavalcade at Epcot is coming to an end on May 4th. Mickey and Friends will instead make appearances at the park's entrance, as we've seen recently in a physically distanced manner. The Cavalcade Circled World Showcase is a way for guests to safely see characters since the reopening last July. It seems that Disney has decided enough is enough. Tired of paying for gas for this car. It's time for these characters to walk, and so they will. Uh, Neil, I, I will say this much. Uh, the Cavalcade at Epcot didn't work so well. The, the paths are only so wide, and they caused a bit of a bottleneck, so I get it. Of course, Anna and Elsa's cavalcade also ended this year for them to start appearing in front of the Norway Pavilion. This leaves only the Princess Promenade cavalcade, and it's unclear how much longer that will last either. If you want one of the most exclusive souvenirs of the Walt Disney World Resort, float your way to Disney Springs, because adventure is out there. 
A new balloon theme to Up is now available, but you have to be sharp as only 30 of them are sold each day. We managed to spot them available in the town center uh, outside the Under Armour brand house. The balloon features Carl Fredrickson's house, and it's Carl and Russell floating along, uh, supported by a rainbow of colored balloons. Yes, that's right. It's a balloon themed to balloons. It's a perfect item for the upper Pixar fan in your life. Uh, yeah, it's a $17 balloon, mind you. The Art of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge coffee table book was released this week, and it's chock full of the art that led to the creation of the theme park land. We recently revealed concept art of the female Captain Rex droid that'll be piloting the transport between the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel and Galaxy's Edge. But now uh, the book has also offered a look at the upcoming sit-down restaurant inside the hotel. The image is captioned Cruiser Restaurant Interior Version 1, Church Lim Cheng, uh, I guess the artist on that, in the art of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, letting us know this concept art is for the upcoming hotel's restaurant, which will feature entertainment for guests. Of course, the Star Cruiser is set to be a luxury experience. It'll have a dinner show of sorts. The table service restaurant will be on the main level where guests enter the hotel, along with some, other, uh, some of the guest rooms, the dojo, a courtyard, the brig, the engineering room, and some restrooms. On other floors, there are other dining options, such as the Silver Sea Lounge. Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser was originally announced to open this year, but Disney has been quiet as of late. If you're looking for a hearty breakfast the whole family can enjoy, look no further than the Whispering Canyon Cafe at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. The all-you-care-to-enjoy breakfast skillets already feature Mickey waffles, and now the kids' bref breakfast skillet has a unique treat, Mickey-shaped scrambled eggs. At $13, kids can enjoy not one, but two Mickey-shaped breakfast foods, plus country potatoes, hickory smoked bacon, breakfast sausage links, buttermilk cheddar biscuits, and sausage gravy. One of my favorite breakfasts on all of property. I, I highly recommend Whispering Canyon. Today marks the grand reopening, finally, after over 400 days of Disneyland's theme parks, which have been closed since March of 2020. Uh, you can join us here on the YouTube channel to see those first moments of the parks reopening as guests finally walk right down the middle of Main Street USA one more time to Sleeping Beauty Castle. It is an emotional video. I know many of you have watched it already, but uh, it's worth a view if you haven't. Cast members were cheering and declaring welcome home as guests entered. They were lining Main Street to wave to everyone. The fire engine even drove by as we neared the castle hub. Executives were present, Josh Tomorrow. Even Bob Chapek came out. A rare Bob Chapek Park appearance that lasted more than five consecutive minutes. Very proud of you, Bob. We're very proud of you. While we'll be checking up on all our favorite attractions at Disneyland, we're double-checking the rides that have been refurbished in the past year. We already looked at the Haunted Mansion's new load area and pet cemetery, but we took a closer look at those and the ride itself today. In the pet cemetery, plants have been added, themed to each pet. There's catnip around the cat's tomb, cabbage, Next to the rabbit and toad lilies are near the toad. The plants surrounding Stripey the skunk give off a garlic smell. The queue is physically distanced, of course, with markers on the ground, so guests remain six feet apart. I know this is going to be newish to our, uh, you know, California visitors. And uh, for those of you who have been going to Walt Disney World, you're probably bored of this already. The building has uh, been painted with multiple shades of white to make it seem more shadowy now. And inside the stretch room elevator at Disneyland, Still in operation. Unlike here at Walt Disney World, they still have a working stretching room. There are markers numbered one through five in the stretching room, and cast members tell guests which marker to stand on to keep a distance. Guests are, all, uh, guests are then told to get in line in order of their marker number. And in the loading area, one of the new elements is a cat statue, a reference to the original idea for the mansion by Imagineer Xavier Atencio, who would have had a demonic one-eyed cat throughout the ride. The statue's eyes sometimes glow, uh, one eye sometimes glows red. On the right itself, guests may notice a new addition to Madame Leota's seance room. A wicker chair is floating among the musical instruments. There are no major changes to the rest of the ride, but apparently it looks better than ever. You can watch our full ride video. We now have a full, full ride video right here on our YouTube channel. In Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, we visited Rise of the Resistance, which is utilizing the virtual queue. Star Wars Rise of the Resistance was only open for two months before Disneyland Resort closed due to the pandemic. With the virtual queue, guests can try to snag a boarding group at 7 a.m. or 12 noon via the Disneyland app. The app will then inform you of when your boarding group has been called, and you can head to the ride. Once you arrive, cast members will check your boarding pass as you line up. Markers help keep, keep guests uh, physically distanced. Unfortunately, the pre-show room with Ray and BB-8 is skipped entirely, but 
you still get to go on the resistant ship where parties are assigned their own marker to remain distance. There's lots of plexiglass in there as well. There's more plexiglass aboard the Star Destroyer once you get in there. And in the prison cell, guests are once again sent to a specific circular marker. The prison transport vehicles have plexiglass dividers between two rows. This is what we've seen in Florida. So multiple parties can board one vehicle. And after the queue and pre-shows, the ride itself remains largely the same. But if you want to check it out with the plexiglass, we have a full POV video of Disneyland's Rise of the Resistance right here on the channel as well. While wandering through Black Spire Outpost, we paid a visit to the market. Notice some COVID-19 safety measures there. Like the resort overall, the areas have uh, their own limited capacity. There's a cast member situated by an enter here sign as you approach the market. Physical distancing markers create an informal queue. Hand sanitizer also available there. Inside the market, physical distancing markers are set up for guests wishing to enter shops. And like the castle silhouette markers we found elsewhere at Disneyland Park, these markers have been customized. They have sort of, it looks like that thing that R2-D2 sticks the little arm into and it spins that kind of droid thing. I don't know what to call that. Uh, but this is cool because at Walt Disney World, we do not have any themed social distancing markers. So this is, this is really great. On the latest episode of the D23 Inside Disney podcast, Disneyland President Ken Patrick uh, made two fairly big announcements. The first is that the Jungle Cruise attraction at Disneyland will reopen this summer. While no date is specified, this is a more exact time frame than previously offered. The attraction is currently closed and walled off from guests as cultural sensitivity and inclusion changes are made to the ride. Of course, the Magic Kingdom version is staying open while those changes are made. Potrick also uh, stated that the new Disneyland annual pass holder membership program will launch by the end of 2021. He, of course, originally said that he would launch it as soon as they possibly could after the reopening, but uh, this seems to be they're going to take a little more time, I think. It's as if they like making uh, you know, a little more money per guest per day. The existing Disneyland annual pass program was ended and all passes canceled back in January. Disneyland is currently only selling single and multi-day tickets for theme park entry for the time being. Construction is on track for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Disneyland Park with the latest addition springing up overnight in Mickey's Toontown. Construction walls now surround the Toontown Five and Dime and the Gag Factory Shop, which will be transformed in the El Capitoon Theater entrance and as well the exit of the new attraction. The walls extend all the way to the bandstand and seating areas for Pluto's Doghouse and Clarabelle's, which remain temporarily closed. Sadly, it looks like the gags ahead are no more as the new era dawns in Toontown. You can see concept art of the theater's exterior now. We'll show that to you now. That's what everything will look like when it's done. While inside the El Capitoon Theater, guests will see a display of props courtesy of the Toontown Hysterical Society before they attend the world premiere of Mickey and Minnie's new short, Perfect Picnic. If you're familiar with the Walt Disney World incarnation of the attraction, you know things may not go exactly as planned. The massive show building is visible from Toontown as well, uh, prompting a humorous sign to be draped over the exterior for the time being, declaring that there's no big building here. Uh, yep, it's a thing. Uh, thankfully, it looks like this is going to be covered with the Toontown uh, Hills eventually at some point. We're looking forward to that, but it's nice that they made the sign uh, for the time being. But construction walls may be visible probably until the attraction is just about ready in 2023. With Disneyland being open, this feels uh, like a cause for celebration. And how does Disneyland celebrate absolutely everything? Well, with a churro, of course. And that brings about the Celebration Churro. It can be found at the cart near the hub of the park, just steps away from Sleepy Beauty Castle. The birthday cake-flavored churro sells for $5.75 with a marshmallow dipping sauce available for an additional dollar. It's the only thing in the park you get for a dollar, in fact. Give it <laughs> Given that we missed the big 65th birthday party for the park last year, this seems like a tasty way to make up for it, and likely this was developed for the 65th but never got to debut. The full review can be found at uh, DisneylandNewsToday.com. After over a year of waiting, both Disneyland and the attractions of Disney California Adventure are open again, and with this monumental occasion comes some brand new merchandise. Whether you collect pins, T-shirts, or just want a new face covering to match that Disneyland feeling, well, there's plenty to enjoy in the Magic is Back collection. In the initial announcement, four pins were also listed as part of the collection. However, the pins have not arrived yet. We did find all these other items, though, at the Emporium in Disneyland. Just before entering the park, we made a stop by the stroller shop, say that five times fast, and noticed that rental prices have undergone an increase. Guests can rent single strollers, double strollers, electric convenience vehicles, or ECVs, and wheelchairs at this location outside of Disneyland Park. Per day, a single stroller now costs $18, an ECV costs 
$80. That's eight zero, and a wheelchair now costs $35. The price of the ECV is $60 plus a $20 refundable deposit. Price of the wheelchair is $15 plus a $20 refundable deposit. At the counter, the rental price for the double stroller is displayed for $36 a day. Previous prices were $15 for a single stroller, $35 for the double, $70 for an ECV, and $32 for a wheelchair. We recently shared that a new photo opportunity featuring Sam Wilson's Captain America is coming soon to Disney California Adventure. And now Disney has shared a first look at the experience. I don't want to hear about spoilers from you in the chat, any, in the comments anymore, ladies and gentlemen, because Disney has posted this everywhere. We are just reporting the news. Disney Parks on TikTok gave a spoiler of the new photo op, uh, which is at uh, Disney California Adventure. Uh, the TikTok then leads us to the photo op. The color palette of Sam Wilson's Captain America combines his falcon wings with the vibranium shield as the figure seemingly soars in the background of a gradient cloud-filled sky. After making his debut as Captain America in the finale of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Sam Wilson's brand new costume inspired by his look in the comics is represented in this new offering. A sign posted near the photo op asks, do you have what it takes to wield the shield? For prompting guests to download the Disney Movie Insider's mobile app to launch the experience, Scanning the QR code directs to Disney Movie Insider's website to download the app for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier AR experience, which is only available on iOS devices. Disney has announced that this photo op can be found in Hollywood Land at DCA, uh, and it is available as of today. The pavement surrounding Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout now has space remnants in it. Space remnants have a geologic pattern with blue, purple, red, and gold hues. It can be found on the streets and sidewalks surrounding Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout lead all the way up to the show building and into the new Avengers campus, which isn't open just yet. Uh, also, they got new lampposts, which I think are really, really cool. Uh, all of this is, again, uh, to transition this better into the Avengers campus. Of course, this attraction opened years ahead of the new land, which will open in June at DCA. Guests staying at the resort's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa will see modified access to Disneyland and California Adventure as of today. Health and safety checkpoints are already in place. The existing permanent signs guide guests to the conference center, theme parks, and downtown Disney District. New freestanding signs guide guests to the entrance for theme parks and temperature screening. Guests must wear face coverings, maintain physical distancing, and pass a temperature screening, as you might guess. Guest relations cast members greet guests as they approach the temperature screening. Uh, Hogue Medical Group staff mans a temperature screening station, and a sign shows proper face covering use. Before the pandemic, guests staying at the Grand Californian Hotel and Spa could take advantage of the hotel's dedicated entrance to Disney California Adventure. This gate was a real perk, but now hotel guests cannot enter DCA this way. However, they may return to the hotel through what is now solely a park exit. Instead, guests will need to enter the parks via downtown Disney District, joining other guests in lining up for park entry, including at DCA. Hand sanitizer stations and additional signage have been added, and a new directional sign points guests to Disneyland. Guests looking to enter California Adventure will need to walk a bit further to do so for the foreseeable future. It's unclear when or if they'll return uh, entrance, uh, entry to that particular gateway through the hotel. With the Grand Californian Hotel and Spa reopening on Thursday, the first of the Disneyland Resort hotels to do so, uh, we went, of course, to check it out. We're actually staying there. Our own reporter, Katie, is checking it out, and she recorded a wonderful Woods Courtyard View room tour for you to enjoy right here on our YouTube channel. Make sure you watch that. If you want to know about all the procedures, how the pools work, how dining works, what's actually open, etc., at the hotel, we have covered that extensively on our website as well. So you go to WWNT.com or DisneylandNewsday.com to read all about how staying at the Grand Californian now works. With the reopening of the hotel, along with guests came equally excited cast members in various functions wearing new costumes. The valet outfit is now standard brown pants, a green shirt, and a fairly nondescript zip-up vest. The hotel pool concierge is wearing a new light outfit made for being outdoors. Brown shorts and a white button-up is the new look. The front desk cast member costumes are also new upon the reopening. Front desk cast members choosing the more feminine style of the costume wear a long sleeve blouse and a tan skirt. A patterned scarf and a brown belt complete the costume. A shirt, tie, tan trousers, and tweed vest come together to create the masculine version of the front desk costume. Cast members may choose the costume most fitting for them as part of the updated Disney look guideline. With the reopening of the hotel comes tons of merchandise as well. They haven't been able to put this out forever, and so they've got a ton of new merchandise for the Grand Californian, which can be found in the Acorns Gifts and Good 
a gifts and goods gift shop, say that as well five times fast, view that whole collection on our website. It's very cute. I love the Chippendale mode. As final touches are being made to the highly anticipated Disney's Hotel New York, The Art of Marvel, due to open soon, Disneyland Paris has finally announced the regal transformation of the iconic Disneyland Hotel, which will be the first Disney hotel to celebrate a royal theme. This complete refurbishment is the next step in the ambitious renovation plan for all of Disneyland Paris's hotels, spanning several years and more than 5,700 rooms. The impressive transformation demonstrates Paris's ongoing commitment to continually investing in the guest experience and its successful strategy to infuse more beloved Disney franchises and stories into its hotels. Disneyland Paris is now accelerating the refurbishment plan by embarking on a transformation of the Disneyland Hotel, which will strengthen its flagship status at the resort and offer guests an even better five-star experience. And what you're looking at now is what the new rooms will look like, which obviously this is very, very much needed. I love this hotel. It's, it's very 90s Disney, and it, it reminds me a lot of the Grand Floridian when it first opened, um, but it is long overdue. We stayed here a year or two ago, I mean, two, two years ago, and it was kind of run down uh, for the price. So um, I'm, I'm glad to see Disneyland Paris investing in. I love Disneyland Paris, and I, I'm very excited to see them uh, invest back into all the properties. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next trip. The best part, their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. The Vacationeer, the official travel agency of WDWNT. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of News Today. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.